Today on Adventure Guides, we'll be in King Salmon, Alaska with the colorful guides of Blue Fly Guide Service. We'll meet Patricia, who risks it all to stick giant migratory rainbows. I was stuck in a bear trap back there. Her father and fellow guide Rick, who works for Patricia, and Will, who hauls in some amazing Arctic char. That's oh, good fish. Join us in King Salmon, Alaska, as we fish for these huge char, rainbows, and grayling, right here on Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. Hello and welcome to Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. I'm your host, John Deach. King Salmon, Alaska is a small town of only 440 inhabitants, but it's the gateway to one of the most extraordinary cold water fisheries anywhere on the planet. We'll be starting out our fishing adventure at the Blue Fly Lodge Bed and Breakfast in King Salmon, Alaska with owner and local guide, Patricia Adell. Right. Patricia Adell first came to Alaska 10 years ago for a guiding course. After she got a taste of fishing the Alaska waters, she decided she never wanted to leave. And you know, once you get up here, it, it's all you can do is figure out how you can get back and how you can, and in my case, it was like, well, do I get a real job again or do I keep fishing? Patricia was born into the fishing world. Her grandfather was an avid fisherman who was one of the first to catch a tarpon on a fly in the 1940s. Patricia grew up on Chesapeake Bay, fishing with him and her father, Rick Adell, who now guides for Patricia's outfitting business. Now I'd say I lucked out in the dad department, especially since he gets to come up here and hang out with me all summer. Well, yeah, I'm a proud father, that's for sure, and, and I would, uh, I hope that, uh, I would like to think that I taught her everything she knows, which, of course, is not the truth. For the Blue Fly Guides, late fall sometimes brings on the rare opportunity to fish rather than guide on their home waters. In particular, the Naknek River offers trophy rainbow trout that move down out of Naknek Lake to gorge on salmon carcasses. Patty's fishing buddy, Sophie the dog, gets to come along too. The Naknek is by far one of the most awesome rivers up in Alaska. I mean, it's it's the whole reason why I'm here. Um, it's got a phenomenal run of salmon, so it's a huge amount of bioresource for the trout. And, you know, it can sustain the diets of huge fish, which is what we're catching. And it's, I mean, they're carnivores. So it, it's a pretty awesome situation up here. Very, very unique. Um, I've, I've never seen it anywhere else in the world. So we're at the beginning of the rapids proper, which is the beginning of the catch and release zone for um, trout. And right now we're in the lower rapids on the lower flat. As you move up the river, there's probably oh, six miles of trout fishing all the way up to the lake. Your pops is on. Patricia's father, Rick, spent eight years guiding on the Togiak River in Bristol Bay before he decided to come and work for his daughter in nearby King Salmon. Because of the climate, the fish in this region have a short window to feed before the rivers freeze over. They must gorge now during the fall to store up for the long winter months. These carnivorous rainbows are famous for growing to record sizes. Although Patricia is thrilled that her dad catches trout right off the bat, they have yet to pull in one of the trophy rainbows over 30 inches long that the knack-knack is famous for. Using her two-handed spay rod, Patricia casts swings her fly, and hooks up with a massive fish. And the fight is on. <laughs> We're just competitive enough, just stubborn enough that everybody gets a good fishing day. Come on, Patricia. Part of 
Wading quickly down the river, more than 150 yards, Patty struggles to bring her fish to net. The way it uses the fast current to its advantage, she suspects it's a big rainbow. Slowly, she gains the upper hand on this spectacular fish. Got him? Yeah, that is a oh! Oh, 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 Look at the girth on that thing. Yeah, that's a smash. Can you have a Oh, oh man. Jesus. Being able to, you know, a 30-inch fish on this river is approximately 10 years old, and then I think it gets a year older with every inch. They, according to fishing game, that's what they they say. But just catching a fish like that, holding it in your hands, I mean, you've never a 10 or 12-year-old trout. That's insane, you know. So just holding it and looking at it and being able to release it is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> After day one of fishing with the Blue Fly crew and King Salmon, it is clear that Patricia is one of the region's top guides. For Patricia, the Knack Knack is her office, as well as her playground to practice the sport she loves. I haven't found anywhere else that has drawn me like this river has. Right now, no. I mean, I suppose when I do, I'll, I'll go there. But right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy here. Next on Adventure Guides, we fly out to Katmai National Park and beyond, where we encounter more than just big fish. Welcome back to Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. We're here in King Salmon, Alaska, where we'll check in on the guides from Blue Fly Guide Service. And now for a guide tip. The best Alaskan guides, like Patricia Adele, design and make their own flies including giant streamers tied with rabbit hair and beads of all sizes, shapes, and colors. Depending on the conditions, an angler will strip a giant flesh fly to imitate a piece of dislodged salmon flesh, or can dead drift a bead to imitate a salmon egg. Today, Patricia Adele, her father Rick, and fellow guide Will Kranz are headed to Katmai National Park to fish below famous Brooks Falls. Brooks Falls is known for its legendary fishery, including healthy migratory trout that follow spawning salmon here late in the season. It is also home to the second largest conglomeration of brown bears in the state of Alaska. We are going to flat to the Brooks River, and that's about 15 minutes away from King Salmon. And um, it connects Knack Lake to Brooks Lake. It's about a mile long a river. It's got the famous Brooks Falls in the middle. And that's where a lot of bears stand on the falls, catch salmon in their mouth. It's also killer trout fishing. So lots of bears. Pretty furry over there, but good fishing. The Blue Fly Guides use Branch River Air Service to fly into this amazingly scenic fishery. Because it's late in the season, Trout in this fishery tend to key in on egg patterns that imitate eggs from spawning salmonids. But like the giant trout in the knack neck, these fish will also feed off decaying salmon carcasses. My morning start. <laughs> We're at Brooks like Camp on the knack neck lake. So it's October now, and there's not a lot of commotion, and it's pretty awesome. While Patricia and her guiding associates are off the clock today, they still have rough professional choices to make, like whether to fish a streamer to resemble the flesh of a salmon carcass or a bead to imitate a salmon egg. Remember you were talking about silver hook? Might bring you bad luck today. After landing the most fish the day before, Rick encourages a little friendly competition between the guides before they hit the water. Are we having a contest for the biggest one or the most caught? Mm. <laughs> Suiting up for a big day. It's going to be a good one. I've always wanted to fish over here late season and big fish. The real competition beneath Brooks Falls, it appears, comes from outside the group, from another type of angler that could become dangerous if threatened. I don't think we can cross over there. We can't Although cross. They couldn't have climbed over the top. Look at him in. 
Oh, is that, are they blocking our route right now? <laughs> Alaskan brown bears are the coastal form of the grizzly. They congregate in this part of Brooks River in summer and fall months to feed off the plentiful salmon. This year, upwards of 100 bears made this spot their stomping grounds. While guides and anglers like Patricia and her associates are required by the Park Service to stay at least 50 yards from these bears, the rewards of fishing here far outweigh the risks. After watching the Adele family dominate the waters on the knack-knack, Will, using an egg pattern, gets the hot handle on the brooks. Unfortunately, the blue fly guides did not hook as many big trout as they expected. Like many places near the Arctic Circle, warmer weather patterns due to climate change are affecting many aspects of the guiding life in Alaska. Scientists cannot say for sure how this warming has affected fisheries here. But for guides like Patricia, she'd prefer to think simply that some days are just better than others. Certainly, the bears seem irritated, perhaps by the lack of fish. And at one point, they surround Patricia as she wades across the river. You got I was stuck in a bear trap back there. I saw you. It was 15 bears between where I was down there, 4,000 cubs, and then like five other bears, like just all along the bank sleeping. That's what I was trying to oh. explain. Guys. The guiding community in King Salmon is used to spending their season fishing side by side with these brown bears. With an estimated 1.5 million fish in the Brooks River alone, one would think that there are enough fish to go around for both anglers and bears. However, like other Alaskan guides, Patricia brings along bear spray. And some guides carry weapons, like a 44 Magnum, to protect their clients and themselves from a bear that wants to eliminate the competition. Coming up on Adventure Guides Fishing Edition, the competition heats up as the Blue Fly crew heads out to the Ugashik Narrows to target hefty Alaskan char with their pilot, Chris yeah, Klosterman. This That's is the most exciting guide's day off yet, with the only question, can Patricia outfish the men again? Char fishing with Blue Fly Ugashik Narrows. Don't go away. Adventure Guides Fishing Edition will be right back. Today, the guides of Blue Fly Guide Service here in King Salmon, Alaska, take off with their pilot, Chris Klosterman, to hunt down trophy Arctic char with a fly rod. This is the essence of extreme fishing, found exclusively in this region of the world. The de Havilland beaver that Chris flies is specifically designed for bush operations here in Alaska. It's perfectly suited for the task of spotting and catching fish in these remote bodies of water. Being an accomplished guide in Alaska means working with your pilot to scout and find your client's fish, flying low over rivers in search of bright red and orange streaks. While these streaks indicate salmon, Arctic char and rainbows will undoubtedly be sitting just downstream. He's right there. The Blue Fly crew ends up in the Ugashik Narrows, a short piece of river that connects the upper and lower Ugashik lakes. Huge char and grayling move into this stretch to feed on spawning sockeye eggs in the fall. That's a 
handsome fish. It's a real handsome fish. Fishing for char, Patricia and her fellow blue fly guides utilize several techniques. In addition to dead drifting egg patterns, they also strip flesh fly streamers below and mouse patterns above the surface. I feel like it's all in the cast right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is all in the cast. Ooh, that's a big orange guy. Like many Alaskan fly fishing guides, Patricia will craft a mouse pattern by spinning deer hair then use it like a popper, stripping a fly across the surface of large pools and runs. These carnivorous, beastly fish attack these patterns, convinced that it's a swimming mouse that has fallen off the bank. Char vision with blue fly and gashing narrows. Scouting and catching gorgeous char on your day off right. is just part of being a top Alaskan guide. But for Patricia Adele, being one of the only female fishing guides in Alaska has not always been easy. Come on, Patricia. Everybody asks me that question about, you know, what's it like to be up here as a female guide. And I can't say it honestly really was too much of a concern. I just I just came up and I wanted to fish and and I did it. And um, if anybody was not supportive of the idea, I think it would probably fuel me more. Damn. Wow. That's a toad. That's a clean fish, too. He's very clean. You know, I've been up here now for 11 years, so I think I have a, I get along with a lot of the people that live up here, and I think I have a lot of support, and they know that I'm for real, and I'm not just screwing around. Look at the lipstick on that fish, too. Sixty-three pounds. <laughs> I was going to say fifty-two. Patricia takes guiding in Alaska very seriously. Perhaps being a female guide means having to prove more to her male counterparts. That was the hardest working char I've ever had. Today, Patricia puts the hurt on the guys by hooking into the biggest char of the season. Gorgeous. Next on Adventure Guides, we'll fish one of Patricia's secret spots for massive char and grayling. After outfishing her fellow guides and catching the big char, can the other anglers keep up? Stay tuned and find out on Adventure Guides Fishing Edition, coming right up. Welcome back to Adventure Guides Fishing Edition. We're here in King Salmon, Alaska, fishing with Blue Fly Guide Service, Patricia Adele and her father Rick, who are fishing and scouting nearby waters with their bush pilot. Alaskan rivers are like classrooms that teach us how salmon are at the center of a delicate ecosystem. The salmon live in the oceans, then at the end of their lives, swim up these rivers to spawn and die, providing food for brown bears, bald eagles, and many other species like this grayling. Guides like Patricia are increasingly concerned about the realities of global warming and by a nearby mining project that critics believe could drastically reduce the number of salmon here near Bristol Bay. A reduction in salmon would have a disastrous effect on more than just guides and could cause Alaska's entire food chain to collapse. While the grayling that Rick has on here is considered a trophy by many standards, Many fly fishermen who come to Alaska 
target trophy rainbows. For Patricia, fishing and guiding in one of the last prime spots in the world for trophy char and rainbow trout is more than a fantasy. It's a full-time job that takes skill, dedication, and hard work. For her, there is nowhere else better in the world to work as a guide than Alaska. Did you see that fish that I caught? <laughs> that is why I'm here, hands down. And, and watching other people catch fish like that, I really, really dig it. I mean, it's um, almost as much as I enjoy catching them myself, really. So I think that's where the whole guiding thing comes into play, is you're a good guide if you enjoy seeing other people catch fish as much as you enjoy catching fish. For an outfitter like Patricia, who spends most of her time getting her clients into fish rather than fishing herself. An outing with her fellow guides for a few days, scouting locations, has been a rare treat. I think if you're a fisherman and, and you have the time and, and hopefully the wherewithal to, to fish with a, in a lot of places, uh, I think you keep discovering um, new types of fish you haven't caught before and new techniques that you can use in, in the fish that you have caught before. So it's. Um, pastime that, uh, that for me is, is very interesting, uh, a good mixture of, of catching fish and being with people and uh, of course being in the outdoors in Alaska is, uh, is something special. Alaska fisheries face many challenges. Scientists predict that by mid-century the oceans around southern Alaska will become too warm to support healthy salmon populations. Mining also threatens these fisheries, but the good news is that guides here continue to practice catch and release support conservation groups, and continue to be positive about this amazing Alaskan fishery. Hey, thanks for joining us here in King Salmon, Alaska. We'll see you next time on Adventure Guides Fishing Edition right here on Outdoor Channel.